Hi, friends. Because it's so important to me that I am able to authentically be myself and I want to speak the way that I normally speak here on my podcast, you'll find the occasional curse word in my show. So if that bothers you, it's not something that you want your kids to hear, grab your headphones. In the show, you'll also find some episodes with adult themes, just things that are a little bit too mature or hard to process for young ears. So in general, headphones might be a good idea. I love you guys. I'm glad you're here and enjoy this episode. We're surrounded with the message that it's the tired life, the no time for myself life, the hard life. And while it can be hard and full of lots of showing up for others, the idea that being a mom means living a joyless, stale, or shit show life all the time is something I am passionate about putting a stop to. I'm Ali Casaza, and I'm about to make your life so much lighter. I'm the best-selling author of the book, Declutter Like a Mother, and the creator of several life-changing online programs that have enrolled tens of thousands of students. If you've been feeling chronically behind, if you wake up feeling exhausted for a day that hasn't even started yet, if you constantly feel like you don't have time for the things that really matter to you, I've got you. I went from being a completely overwhelmed, depressed, struggling mom of three babies and toddlers who, I'll be honest with you, didn't want to be a mom anymore because I felt like I was failing so hard at it every day. Through a lot of figuring out, searching for help, inner work, and shifting how I was doing and being, I found that the less I had in my way, the more joy, focus, and purpose I brought into my life. We have to define what is in our way and what is actually worthy of our energy. I went from blogging about my journey to becoming the founder of a multi-million dollar online business, all based on helping women live better, lighter lives. Join millions of listeners around the world for conversations that will lift your mood, focus your intention, and raise your vibe week after week. We talk motherhood, lifestyle, well-being, and simplifying everything from home to schedule to business. Listen, this is about not just waking up and reacting to our lives and letting the day run us but setting the intention and taking ownership of every single day and making life work for us, making it easier. Friend, I am so glad you're here. I'm Allie, and you're listening to The Purpose Show. Hello, my loves. Welcome to The Purpose Show. We are going to have a quick chat about judgment. And it's just something that I've been thinking about a lot lately that I thought would be a great conversation for us to have here. So... There was a situation where, I mean, a situation, like it's like a one-off thing that's never happened before. A regular situation because I'm married where, but recently there was like a specific thing that I just noticed. And the weirdest thing happened. Like I was feeling judgmental of my husband, Brian. Like I just was thinking about like something that he was doing in his life or not doing in his life. And I just was like, so annoyed by that. Like it, it, I just, it put me in a bad mood. It bugged me. And I just started thinking all these like judgmental thoughts about him and like, Oh, like, why doesn't he do like, like this? Why wouldn't he do it like that? And I just started like going down, like just accidentally down this mental path of just like judgment about him. And the weirdest thing happened as I was doing that, I almost felt like I like came up out of my own mind and saw myself, like witnessed myself having these judgmental thoughts about him and just like noticed like this area of his life that I'm judging him for is the same area in my own life that I have not been doing well and taking care of myself or I've been feeling really off. I've been like not doing what I know is going to, you know, really be the right thing for me to do in this area of my life. And that I was like unhappy with myself in that same area. (laughs) And I just had this like moment. I don't know if I'm making it sound as like epiphany as it felt, but I had this weird moment where I just like, my brain was divided into two parts. And the, the, there was a part of my brain that was just having all these negative judgmental thoughts about him. And then another part that was just like seeing myself, watching myself have these judgmental thoughts and just like, noticing like, wow, that is super judgmental. And (laughs) it's ironic because this is literally like you, like he's mirroring you to yourself and you're judging him, but really you're not, you're really judging yourself. And so it just, it hit me that this is what is always happening all the time. I think it's very 
common and normal to feel judgmental of your spouse or partner because like they are such like we're in close proximity and in so many ways they do mirror us, right? Like we're all mirroring each other. If you haven't read the book, Mindful Loving, I think it's by Henry Grayson. I will link it in show notes for you guys, but you you must read it. And it just is really talking about, about that. But anyway, I decided like, okay, I'm really judging myself. What's the solution here? I, I'm just really not happy with this area of my life. And I don't like the way that I'm handling it. I don't like the way that I'm living in this way. It just doesn't feel aligned with me. It doesn't feel good. And I've just been putting it off and making excuses. And then out here, Brian is putting it off and making excuses in his own life. And I'm just judging him so harsh, harshly because that is literally how I feel about myself. And I just decided like, what an epiphany, like what a moment I'm going to take this and run with it. And I decided to focus on myself and work on that same area of my own life for myself. And wouldn't you know it within like a month or two, the judgment that I felt about Brian shifted and he had changed nothing. It just, it shifted. I felt empathy. And then like, you know, it's been, it's been a few more months since then. And you know, surprise, surprise, because if we just leave people alone and let them be on their own journey, things always work out. He has been talking to me about this area of his life and just like asking me how I feel about that in my own life. And like, you know, just talking to me and just sharing his struggle and sharing like what's been going through his mind with this and how he wants to not be that way anymore. And he's just been making his own shifts and his own timing because I didn't harp on it. I just focused on myself because really that was my issue. I was just projecting to him. And so it it worked and I shifted how I felt about both of us by realizing what the real problem was and leaving him the F alone and not nagging or pointing out a flaw like constantly and just realizing like, I'm really, you know, I'm really real root of my unhappiness is that I'm not doing this for myself. Mamas, I have amazing news. My second book is officially available for pre-order and it's actually not for you, it's for your kids. It's called Be the Boss of Your Stuff and it was written by me with input from my own kids and it was written for kids ages eight to 13 or really anywhere around there. A bunch of moms in my community have been messaging me that they're buying it to read to their younger kids and I have the book in my hands right now and flipping through it, that is going to work perfectly. So really, this is for any kid. This book is going to empower your kids to take on a lifestyle of simplicity, less clutter, and teach them all the amazing things that I've been teaching you that have helped you so much and spare them the hard journey. It's gonna help them move away from corporate consumerism in a way that will serve them greatly their whole lives. Be the Boss of Your Stuff will also help your kids clean out their rooms and make decisions about all their stuff with confidence by themselves. This means the pressure and micromanaging is off of you completely, which is my whole goal with this book. It's also going to help them work through tough emotions that might come up as they make decisions about their things, deal with what to do if you feel guilty because somebody gave you something, what to do if grandma or grandpa or Aunt Sally is continuously giving you things and you're trying to stay decluttered. It's going to help them take charge of their space, figure out their design style and bring it into their newly decluttered room and live a lifestyle of freedom for life. Honestly, getting this book for your kids is a huge, huge gift. Be the Boss of Your Stuff releases March 1st, but I want you to pre-order it now, not only because pre-orders are life-changing for an author, but because if you pre-order it, you get something that those who buy it once it's actually out will not be getting, and that is a free brand new course. My kids and I created Be the Boss of Your Stuff, the crash course just for kids. It is brand new and has not been accessed by anyone or sold anywhere. It features my oldest two kids, Bella and Leland, they're 12 and 10. And it's them talking to your kids and teaching them about minimalism, decluttering, how to keep their rooms non-disastrous, just very, very simple, really easy to watch, easy to take in. And of course we know, as I say all the time, kids retain information so much better when it's delivered to them through other kids. So this is just a really cool thing, a tool that you can have in your mom tool belt, have access to, 
put it on the iPad, show it to your kids and let someone else, let other kids talk to them about this. Again, it's about removing that burden from you as the parent. And none of this content is anywhere. It is brand new. It is only for those that pre-order the Be The Boss Of Your Stuff book. And it is fun for kids of all ages to watch. The course is also valued at $129 and you will be getting it for free when you pre-order. Another bonus with this is that the course will be delivered to your email right away, right after you pre-order and submit your confirmation number so you can have your kids start taking in this content and thinking about this topic while you wait for the book to arrive and that can then take them deeper. So to pre-order and do all of this, Go to be the boss of your stuff.com, pre order the book now. And on that same web page, you'll see the place to submit your confirmation number from your order, and that will get you your free course access. So be the boss of your stuff.com, go pre order now, tag me on Instagram, Facebook, tell all your mom friends. Let's make this a whole movement for the next generation. And you know, guys, sometimes there are things where I do certain things and I feel like I do them really well. And Brian, in my opinion, right? It's only my little opinion, my perception. It's not actually fact. It's my perception that he doesn't do them as good as me or he doesn't do it the right way, according to, you know, Allie, which is like, oh, the ultimate authority on how to do everything. Not, <laughs> right? And, then, and it's not directly mirrored. But I have found since this moment, you know, those, those few months ago, that even if it's not directly, like there are things that I feel like I'm doing well and he's not, in some way, there is something that I don't do well, that I don't do right according to anyone else or someone else or Brian or whatever. So in some way, it's a mirror. Does that make sense? So I've just been deciding to try this every time I judged Brian, which if we're honest, is a lot because again living in close proximity, we're together all the time, marriage. And also like this happens with other people too, not just spouses. But really like just the the level of projection and how common it is to notice something about somebody else before you notice it about yourself, right? What is that, that expression, that verse, like you are looking at the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own, Right. We're just mirroring each other all the time. So I just thought I would share that and just encourage you to try it. Next time you feel judgment about your partner or your spouse, check in and see if this is in any way true, that maybe it's actually you that does this. Maybe not in the same area of life or in the exact same way, but is there anywhere in your life that like you're judging yourself or you could be judged by this person that's like, well... He doesn't do this the way that I want him to do it. Well, you don't do things the way that he wants you to do it or the way that this person wants you to do it or you think it's the right way to do it, but is it? Because it's just your perception and that's so much weaker than fact. So anyway, just food for thought. Food for thought. When you're feeling judgmental, instead of looking at the other person, look within. Friend, thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me be a part of your day. It means so much to me. If you would like more like behind the scenes view into my life, this lifestyle, regular like life hacks, tips, and more content that's really gonna create lightness in your social media feed, follow me on Instagram at Ali underscore that's me. Or you can just search Ali Kazaza and it's the one with the blue check mark. If this episode or any episodes was helpful for you, please consider leaving me a review on Apple Podcasts. It is literally the lifeblood for a podcaster and it helps me so much. Thank you for tuning in. If you would like to learn more from me, how I can help you, how you can implement the things we talk about here on The Purpose Show, leaning more into making life simpler, better, and more abundant in the best ways, head to AliCasaza.com. There are free downloads, online programs, and other resources to help you create the life you really want in a very deep dive style. I am always rooting for you, friend. I will see you next time. I'm Ali Casaza, and this is The Purpose Show.